Welcome to episode one of Morning Comes to Comfort. Today, we join Franny and Katie Lynn at the Chamber of Commerce for the small town of Comfort, New Mexico. Franny is an older, sour-looking woman who tries to hide her sourness. She has been an administrative assistant with the Chamber of Commerce ever since she got fired from the school district seven years ago. Katie Lynn is a bright flower, an assistant's assistant. She does her makeup like they did in magazines a year ago. Oh, hey Katie Lynn. Hey Franny, where's Bob? He's out with clients. No kidding, who? You wouldn't know them. Who do you have to? You know me, working for the weekend. It's Edna's birthday on Saturday, so we're having the party tonight. Aunt Edna or baby Edna? Aunt Edna. She probably doesn't have a lot of birthdays left, poor dear. So where's Bob? With some of that Martinez clan from the hills? Worse. City people. Real weirdos. I bet Bob is happy about that. City people bringing some money to comfort. What's he trying to sell them? Oh, not much. A house. What? Which house? The big one, on Maple. What do they want to move here for? They were wearing makeup. Not like they put it on this morning, like they had it on yesterday. That's not the worst thing. I've had days like that. No, Katie Lynn. The boys. The boys were wearing makeup. I don't know what you'd call it back in the city, but I suppose it would be curb appeal. This old house is a real beauty. Now let's just take a look at it for a moment before we head inside. There are two young women in the house-buying market today. Holly looks to be in her early twenties, and she is well-spoken. She looks like a cross between a silent film star and a golden-haired hippie girl. Are you the only realtor in comfort, Bob? I wear a lot of hats in this town. I'm the realtor, president of the Food Growers Association, head of the Chamber of Commerce, and I am the town's mayor. Spider is the other woman. She seems to constantly express her contempt and boredom with the world around her. With her fair skin, black hair, and buxom body, she looks like she could host old horror movies on late-night television. This is boring. Well, maybe we should head inside. Spider, is it? Yeah. Is that a nickname? No. My mother named me Spider. Uh Uh-huh. It's just one of those things. Like your mother named you Robert, but it's like your name is Bob now. Actually, I was born Bobby Lee Mayer. So you're Mayer (laughs) Mayer. I've heard it all before. Give me your worst. Just call me Holly. Just call her Spider. Bobby Lee Spider. Oh good, the boys are here. Are these two your husbands? Boyfriends. Something like that. Jed is baby-faced, but stands at six and a half feet tall. He is barrel-chested and hairy. Malcolm is a skinny young man, but charming. So, what do you guys think? We buying this place? Hello, Jed and Malcolm. We were just talking about names. It was awesome. I'm the mayor of Comfort, and my last name is Mayor, so I'm Mayor Mayor. But you can always just call me Bob. That was the awesome part. Dude, we took a tour of the town. Took two minutes. It's kind of perfect. Bob, we're going to need five rooms, internet access, lots of privacy, and a basement. That's this. You are describing this very house. We'll take it. Don't you want to see the inside? I'd like to see the inside, Bob. Whatever. Franny and Katie Lynn 
are holding down the fort of the Chamber of Commerce when in walks Bob. Good news, ladies, I sold the house. Whoa, well done. Yes, congratulations. Look at this. It's a check for the full amount. No banks, no mortgage. Wow. I've never seen that much money all at once. Am I getting a raise? We're all getting raises. What's wrong, Franny? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? You just don't want city types in comfort. Is that it? I just don't think you have anything to worry about. Those kids just want to be left alone, and I'm sure they want to leave us alone. Maybe I don't want a bunch of freaks living here in comfort, but you'll have to excuse me if I don't jump for joy when you get a check that is obviously fake. It's a forgery. They're pulling some sort of a scam on you. Franny, this old boy wasn't born yesterday. I was a sniper in the army. Yeah, yeah. I called the bank on my cell phone. The check is good. Did you ask what they do to be able to buy a house with cash? Well, I asked, but they didn't want to talk about it a lot. They're artist types. Maybe they made a fortune writing books about wizards. Maybe they have rich parents. Who cares? I'm getting a raise. Morning Comes to Comfort will return after this important message. Eggmurders.com is the place to go to find out about Egg Murders Productions. Watch a streaming movie like Flickr or The Faithful and the Fowl. Download your favorite rock and roll science fiction musical, Psycho Betty's from Planet Pussycat. You can listen to music or find out about upcoming productions. It's all free and there are no ads. You can't like us on Facebook, and you can't follow us on Twitter. Eggmurders.com is your one stop for all things egg murders. Egg murders. Part of your brain belongs to us now. What's up, y'all? It's Katie Huska. Welcome back to Morning Comes to Comfort. Bob has left to take the check to the bank, leaving the women to close up for the weekend. For the next two hours, Franny stares at Katie Lynn with a sour look on her face until, at last, she speaks. Would you like to come over for Edna's birthday tonight? Oh, sure. I'll swing by. Should I bring anything? This is what I think. We should lock up a few minutes early today and drive over to the Maple House. It's like the circus is in town and everyone is going to have a lot of questions for us tonight. Let's go see who those people really are. That sounds great. I'd like to meet them. I don't really know what I was expecting. The old house looks just like it always did. Let's just sit here for a minute. I remember coming out here when I was a kid. My aunt lives right down there. And my other aunt lives over there. Me and my cousins used to climb that tree and have picnics on the branches. Oh, my God! Spider has opened the front door and is standing there staring at them. Oh, my God! Let's go! Start the car! Instead of starting the car, Katie Lynn waves at Comfort's newest resident. Seemingly out of character, Spider smiles and returns the wave. We can't just leave. That would be so rude. Let's go introduce ourselves. Katie Lynn? No! You're the one who wanted to answer questions about the circus. I'm going to go see who they are, and you can stay here if you want to. Well, hello there. We just wanted to welcome you to the town. My name is Franny Miller, and this is Katie Lynn Lee. Spider. Spider? Uh-huh. Is that your real name? No. They stand in front of the house in silence for far too long. Franny gets chilled by Spider, as though the young beauty steals all of Franny's warmth away. At last, Katie Lynn breaks the silence. 
I used to climb that tree when I was a girl. Why did you stop? I don't know. Can I come in? There's not much to see yet, but yes, do come inside. Holly walks up to the guests, but only sees Spider and Franny. What is this? Then she sees Katie Lynn. Oh, I see. Hello, I'm Holly. Is it okay if I hug you? Sure, that's how we do it in comfort. What is your name? Katie Lynn. You are so beautiful, Katie Lynn. <laughs> I'm not. You can let go of her now. Spider, could you hold this for me for a minute? I think the boys might like to meet Katie Lynn. We really should be leaving. Holly releases Katie Lynn from her embrace as Spider wraps her arms around her. Holly then exits as Spider whispers in Katie Lynn's ear. Franny feels sick and angry, feelings that turn to frustration as Holly returns with two strange-looking young men. Look what I found for you. Thanks, Mom. Can I keep her? <laughs> Spider releases Katie Lynn from her embrace, but she and Holly and Jed and Malcolm make a very close circle around her. They chat with her and touch her as they speak. Her shoulders, her hair, her face. Franny is completely ignored. What took you so long to come and visit us? I love her face. Isn't she gorgeous? She's a classic. She smells good. Smell her. And they smell her. Mm. Nice. Look at her shoes. I want to see her feet. Take off your shoes, Katie Lynn. Okay, that's enough. We are leaving right now. Katie Lynn slips her feet out of her shoes. Look at the glittery polish on her toenails. Mmm, I want to touch her toes. Lie down, Katie Lynn. Where? That's it. That's it. I want to leave this very second. Remember? And Edna. I have to leave right now. Katie Lynn raises her hand. Her keys are there. Here, take it. I'll walk to your house later. We'll take you. Out of some instinct or her desire to leave, Franny takes the keys from Katie Lynn's hand. Holly puts her hand on Franny's back and guides her to the door. Franny is chilled by her touch. Before she knows what is happening, Franny finds herself standing outside of the Maple House as the front door closes behind her. Franny stands in front of the house with Katie Lynn's keys in her hand. She is confused. What just happened? Unaware of her own body's movements, she takes a step toward the car. Another step, and another. She stops and turns, looking at the front door, then back toward the car. Another step, and another. She stops and at once runs back to the front door. Franny pounds on the front door, but there is no answer. She tries the handle, but it's locked. She moves over to the window to look inside. There, Spider is staring right back out at her. <gasps> oh. Franny leaves. Morning Comes to Comfort will return after this important message. Idiot Presents presents internationally touring theater and comedy. We are based in Australia and the United States. Visit idiotpresents.com to watch videos and for information about our touring shows. Play Actually, a non-rom-com, has been around the world and our latest show, Love Sick, is making its way around the world now. Come see it at a fringe festival near you, especially if you live in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Winky face. The Torontoist says we make Portlandia-esque sketches and screwball physical comedy. What do you think? Visit idiotpresents.com. Or don't. The hell do we care? This is Katie Huska for Katie Huska, and this message is brought to you against my will. Welcome back to Morning Comes to Comfort. Maggie dresses like a civilian, but she is a full-fledged deputy who works at the sheriff's office. She is in her early 60s and she boasts pretty, straight, silver hair. Likewise, she has a pretty face, but she could easily pass for a much younger woman. Her husband died a few years ago, but she still wears her wedding ring. She sits at her desk with a mug of steaming coffee in front of her. Good heavens, Franny. Where's the fire? Where's the sheriff? I need to see him right away. I'm afraid the sheriff is currently indisposed. Is there something I can help you with? I need the sheriff now. It's an emergency. 
Well, if it's a real emergency that I can't help you with, maybe you should dial 911. Don't think I won't. 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> I can't believe you fell for that. Everyone has lost their minds. Tell me what the problem is. I may be able to help you. Well, you can't. The sheriff is indisposed. Damn it. Just tell Frank to call me when he gets off the toilet. And then, this happened. Happy birthday, Annie Lee Miller is Franny's niece. She is very pregnant, and drying her hands with a dish towel. When Franny joins her in the kitchen, Annie Lee notices that her face is more sour than usual. Franny? Are you okay? Huh? Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm fine. People are starting to leave. I can stay and clean up if... I'm fine. You want to lie down or something? <sighs> What's eating you? You know those kids that moved to town? Sure, the Maple House. Well, I went to see them today. I know. How could you possibly know that? Katie Lynn told me. What? When? Haven't you seen her? She told me the whole story ten minutes ago. Franny takes Annie Lee firmly by the arm and pulls her to the bathroom. Ow! Hey, you're hurting me! What exactly did Katie Lynn tell you? She told me the whole thing. Specifically, what did she say? Let's see. Well, she said that you went over there and that you wanted to leave, so she gave you her car and she came over here for the party and she's getting a raise. What about the orgy? Did she say anything about that? Um... No. She didn't mention anything about an orgy. Are you feeling okay? What specifically did she tell you about those circus people? Those guys? She said they were nice. Real cultured. Why were they not? Precious little angels. Goodbye, Annalee. You're useless. Franny marches around her house until she spies Katie Lynn talking to young Amy May. Amy May is a 17-year-old high school student, well on her way to becoming a 17-year-old high school dropout. Her hair looks like brown straw. They sound really cool. You should just go over there for a visit sometime. I bet they would really like you. There you are. Amy May, get out of here. What's wrong, Franny? What happened to you today? What do you mean? Are you insane? I went to the police. I was so worried. What did you do with those circus people? A smile quite unlike one Franny had ever seen before slowly crept across Katie Lynn's face. Thank you for listening to Episode 1 of Morning Comes to Comfort. My name is Aaron Hendren. I wrote this. This episode was copyright 2014 by Egg Murders Productions. This episode's cast included Justino Broca, Kristen Berg, Barbara Geary, Judd Knudsen, Evening Star Baron, Joanna Fergal, Seruj Bingham, Drew Morrison, Julie Hendren, Laura Hosek, and Amy Bork. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you next month for Episode 2.